Okay, so let us begin with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the gift of life, the gift to interact with each other, to study the, your word and to uh, have a greater comprehension of it. We ask your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our guide in this presentation. Help me to present it in a way that which is clear and uh, understanding to your people and that they, they, they may be strengthened and blessed by this presentation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, this is the third uh, presentation on a Bible-based chronological study with a focus on the book of Judges. I had initially talked about approaching the chronology of chronologies and that Usher, he was uh, produced one of the most detailed uh, chronologies of the Bible and uh, God was had his hand in a lot of what he was doing, particularly the date 742 BC, 627 uh, BC. And he was used to some degree by Miller, but Miller added 153 years um, based upon a, a sort of misunderstanding of Acts in chapter 13, verse 20, which uh, enabled him to sort of add from the period of the judges, add another that period uh, to Usher's chronology, uh, which enabled 6,000 years being calculated to ending in 1843, as he was teaching. And uh, we'll later get into the chronology in, in this year's study of the Book of Judges. And we'll, we'll look at that there, misunderstanding that, uh, that Miller had. Uh, yesterday, also, I looked at like a wide-angle view, I called the presentation, and then that there, I, I kind of was, began to uh, look at just the, where the, the judge's chronology fits in. And we had uh, gone, we would find that, like, a, a specific date uh, that's backed up with archaeological evidence which is the, the, the time when Jehoiachin was taken captive. There was a tablet found that mentions the second day of the 12th month, which is March 16, in the year uh, 597 BC. And from that uh, date, we can then begin to calculate lots of other dates that uh, we find in scripture. Uh, we can see that uh, from that date, we can see that Jerusalem was destroyed in 586 BC, although some people in Wikipedia have it in 587. And there's a, a that's a bit of a, a content, contented area, but there's consequences if you don't have it in 586. You have the escapee taking either a year and a half to reach Babylon and form Ezekiel, or either you have um, the, the siege actually lasting two and a half years is another consequence of either uh, misunderstanding that chronology. Um, so from that there, 586 BC date, I have a diagram here. We see that there's 391 years and six months. If you add up the chronology of the kings, that will take you to 977 BC. And then there's 390 years of Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 5, until the siege in 587, followed by the year and a half siege that takes you to the destruction of Jerusalem. So there's two witnesses there that bring us to 977. And then there's the 36 years period we can count to when the temple began to be built. And then 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1, gives us another period of 480 years that takes us to when uh, the crossing of the Jordan occurred. And I'll return to this here um, subject later uh, concerning the chronology there of the Exodus in, in 1533 BC, why there's a 40 year period then until Israel um, uh, are then, why that, that 480 years doesn't go back 
to the time of the Exodus, but it, rather it goes back to the, the crossing of the Jordan. And so there's an additional uh, 40 years period beyond that 480 years. And I, I discussed a, a wee, some scriptural evidence for 1533 BC, and there, there's more I can add later on, but I want to zoom in to the period of the judges. And um, so this here presentation we're calling the beginning to focus on the chronology of the judges and then return to a wider view. I uh, had also discussed the, uh, in that period, the end of the judges. Uh, we noted from the division of the kingdom, we had the 40 years that Solomon reigned, and then we can add the 40 years that David reigned, and then there was 40 years that Saul reigned. So there's a period of 120 years that would take us to the anointing of Saul from the division of, kingdom, the division of the kingdom in 977 BC, and that would lead us to 1097 BC uh, for the anointing of Saul, and that would be the end point of the period of the judges. And we're going to look at more about the be beginning point of the period of the judges. Now, I had mentioned this, this here misunderstanding that Miller had that enabled him to add 153 years to Usher's chronology. So if we read in Acts chapter 13, verse 20, it tells us the God, that the God of this people of Israel chose their fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided the land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. So from the plain reading of these verses uh, in the King James Version, the impression is given that the period of the judges is about 450 years. And this is uh, something which uh, William Miller picked up on. He had that understanding as well. Usher, he had a period from the time when Joshua was uh, crossing the Jordan with the Israelites then until the, this year, um, anointing of Saul. Uh, Usher had about a 356 year period. So uh, quite a lot, over 100 years uh, less. And uh, so, but other translations give us another perspective as how, how to understand Acts chapter 13, verse 20. So the New International Version says, The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country for 40 years, for about 40 years. He endured their conduct in the wilderness, and he overthrew overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. So there's a different emphasis in this here verse that we get from the New International Version. And Young's literal translation says, and after these things about 450 years, he gave judges until Samuel the prophet. So the emphasis there is that these 450 years occurred uh, prior to the dividing of the land uh, rather than occurring after. And uh, Theodore has a comment. Yes, yeah, so the translator in translating uh, the Greek, what he simply had failed to do was put it in uh, English word order. So he translated the King James, they translated it correctly, but they left the Greek sentence structure. And so it's just misleading when you read it in the King James. Mm -hmm. And part of that could be he's just so used to looking at the Greek that in his mind it made sense to him in English, but it misled many people to read who read it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So uh, Joshua chapter 14, verses 5 to 17. Uh, for, sorry, chapter, Joshua chapter 14, verse 5, to chapter 17, 
verse 11, is where we have an account of the land being divided. And we'll get to looking at that there uh, a bit later. So in comparing these here, this year understanding of chronology, I have a diagram there. But the correct understanding there is Israel have come out of the land of Egypt. You have a period there of 360 60 years until Saul's anointing, and then you have the 84 years of the period of the kings until the construction of the temple began, and that's the 480 years that we find there mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. And then we have the dividing of the lot, land by lot. This is, uh, some people understood it, such as Miller understood it, but after that, God gave them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. Um, but the correct way of understanding uh, Acts 13, verse 20, it says, from the choosing of the fathers, you have there for a space of 450 years until the dividing of the land by lot, and then God gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. So just uh, helps to set out an understanding of them verses. And there's William's, William Miller's chronology. Uh, you have there the creation to the flood. And then he mentions the entry into Canaan. He has 473 years until Samuel. And then 108 years till the foundation of the temple. So it's uh, significantly longer uh, compared to what we had just uh, looked at. So the period of the judges, uh, we're going to now look more focusing on the judges, is the most difficult uh, to reconcile chronological period presented in the Bible. There is no chronological period given that can help us to precisely date the death of Joshua and the elders who outlived him. And therefore, when it comes to dating when the first judge was raised up thereafter, we can at best approximate a date. We have, though, been given two 300-year spans from which we can gauge some of the dates of the judges. Um, one of them is found in Judges chapter 11, verse 26. It states the words of Jephthah in a message to the king of Ammon. After 18 years of Philistine and Ammonite oppression, so while Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns, and Aror and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arnon 300 years, why did ye not, why, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? So that's Jephthah speaking uh, to the king of Ammon. So Israel had dwelt in Heshbon after they defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites. So this was likely in 14. 94 BC, I think probably around November or December, and several months before the conquest of Canaan that began in the spring of 1493 BC. So Numbers 21 verse 13 tells us that this was when Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. So Heshbon and Aror were uh, significant cities in the land of the Amorites. And then there's another statement we have of 300 years. Ellen White says, The ark remained at Shiloh for 300 years until because of the sins of Eli's house, it fell into the hands of the Philistines and Shiloh was ruined. The ark was never returned to the tabernacle here. The sanctuary service was finally transferred to the temple at Jerusalem and Shiloh fell into insignificance. So concerning Heshbon and Aror, uh, occurring in the 1494 BC, so I have uh, quite a lot <laughs> I've studied into this here just to um, try to um, justify what I'm saying, and it's happening late in that year. So uh, uh, in the first day of the fifth month, and just the year, the year before the Israelites crossed the River Jordan, uh, Aaron died. 
and I reckon that was on the 20th of August. In the Julian calendar, or in the, in the Gregorian calendar, that's the 15th of August, which is quite interesting, sort of ties in with the Midnight Cry. Also on the 15th of August, being also the first, the first day of the fifth month in 1844. So thereafter he was mourned for 30 days, so that would take us to the 27th of September. And then the account in Numbers says the Israelites then defeat Arad, the king of Ez, the Canaanites. They murmur and they're sent fiery serpents. Um, a bronze serpent was made for their healing if they are bitten. And then they pitch at nine different places after that, before they defeat Sihon and dwell in the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon and all the villages thereof. So we get that in Numbers chapter 21, verse 25. So these, these events would have occurred between late September and December of 1494 BC. At the next date we can mark is the 21st of February in 1493 BC. Uh, so that's when Moses begins to give his discourse uh, that we read about in Deuteronomy. And that began on the 11th month, on the first day of the month. So the events uh, of Numbers 21 to 36 could then be seen to take place after the Israelites uh, began to dwell in Heshbon and the date of Moses' discourses in Deuteronomy. So these include the defeat of Og, uh, the king of Bashan. They, Balak, also king of Molab, sent a delegation to Balaam and he dwelt in Pethor, which was by the river of the land of the children of his people. So there is, this river has been understood to refer to Euphrates, as Moses recounts of Pethor being associated with Mesopotamia in Deuteronomy chapter 23. So this journey would involve uh, a, region, a region of 400 miles and many weeks of travel. The delegation returned to Moab without Balaam initially, before another delegation was sent afterwards and then uh, Balaam returned to Moab. And then as uh, some people uh, debate this here place, uh, there's an inscription that says in, by the River Jordan. Uh, it, was, it says it was, uh, it has led some to consider that the river in question uh, was the Jordan and therefore the journey would not have been so distant. However, Ellen White states that Balaam was an inhabitant of Mesopotamia and that the ambassadors embarked on a long journey over the mountains and across the deserts to Mesopotamia. So Israel was also thereafter to defeat Midian, after which seven days were required for those involved in the battle to be purified by remaining outside the Israelite camp. So the time involved in these events point to Israel dwelling in Heshbon several months prior to Moses' discourses and therefore late in the year uh, 1494 BC. So this year, 300 uh, year period uh, concerning um, dwelling in Heshbon, um, we have this year period extending to when Jephthah begins to defeat Ammonites and beginning to judge. And prior to that, there was a period of 18 years associated with that oppression. And if we count the periods of spans going back uh, to when the Cush, Cushan Rishathim began to oppress the Israelites after Joshua had died and the elders who had lived him, it's a period of 319 years. And then we'd have to add the period of the elders, and then the period of Joshua, and the period of the conquest of Canaan. So that's going to extend that maybe potentially another 40 years or so. We don't know exactly, but the all this year period is the fit into a span, which is 300 years. And that's potentially Im implies some overlap with some of these here judges. And 
to my mind, I look there, when I see the judges there, the Ehud is associated with there with 80 years, which is quite a long time. And so we want to sort of maybe see if there's any way we can understand that be a period of 80 years and shorten it. Uh, when we look at Ellen White's comments on the early judges, uh, she only mentions here about concerning Othniel. So it says, uh, she sort of confirms what it says in Judges chapter 3, verses 9 to 11. It says for, uh, that the land had rest 40 years. And she says, for 40 years, Othniel ruled in Israel. During this time, the people remained faithful to the divine law and consequently enjoyed peace and prosperity. But when his judicious, judicious and solitary control ceased with his death, the Israelites again relapsed into idolatry. So she confirms this year period of Othniel ruling in Israel at a time of peace. Uh, that this year is uh, what occurred. But she, uh, she doesn't mention the 18 years thereafter, which involved Eglon. And she doesn't mention concerning these here 80 years that we find in Judges 3.15 and, uh, well, concerning Ehud and verse 30 in particular, talks about the 80 years there. And then we have Shamgar also being mentioned. It says, and after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. So, to me, there's a, maybe there's, we don't have that confirmation as we did with Othniel. So I would maybe look to try to see if there's any other way that we can uh, shorten that period. And one of my suggestions was that these here 80 years was accumulative. So we had then 40 years where the land rested in the time of Othniel. And so with Ehud, I'm saying that there's now going to be another 40 years where the land rests, so that by the time that land, then 40 years is over, uh, it could be said that the land had rested 80 years. And uh, in doing that, I have a diagram there that would provide some chronology. Um, to, uh, it would mean that Joshua and the elders who outlived him would be a period of 20 years which I think is potentially quite short. So that's just one consequence of that. And um, there was um, an Egyptologist, uh, the Theodore, that brought to my attention. And he had another idea concerning these here four score years. And his understanding was, uh, or suggestion, application, you could say, was that these, these four score years apply just to the southern area of Israel. Um, but however, there was still wars and trouble going on in the northern part. Um, so we ha he has there the Lord raising up Ehud, beginning the 80 years, and then the land has rest in all Israel for 20 years. And then after that time, it talks about an oppression of Jabin says, in 20 years he oppressed Israel, in Judges chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. And so that's northern Israel only being oppressed. And then at the end of them 20 years where Jabin oppressed northern parts of Israel, Israel prevailed until they had destroyed Jabin, and then um, you had Deborah, Deborah judging Israel at their time in Barak. Uh, comes in and destroys the the armies of Jabin. And then you have the land resting 40 years again for all Israel. Um, just a, a point there, it says, and after Ehud was Shamgar. So it does not state that it was after Ehud had de was dead that Shamgar delivered Israel, or that it was after the period of 80 years. But it's just stating that sometime after e Ehud's death, of Moab, de sorry, defeat of Moab, Shamgar uh, defeated the Philistines. Um, we, I just know that Shamgar 
a judge somewhere in that time. It's hard to sort of pin down exactly where. Um, so I have their a sort of question mark there, just in the centre of that diagram, under Ehud. And I have a, just a question mark as to where Shamgar is there, just somewhere in there, that's all I'm saying. But here, with uh, this understanding of, uh, or appli um, application of Gerhard Gerdau, uh, this would mean Joshua and the others who outlived him, you maybe associate a 40 year period there until they began to be oppressed by Kushan Rishathayim. And so to me, that would be maybe a better uh, application. Yeah, I like this in particular. One is just the language of the 80 years, mm -hmm. right? So it, it just says the land have rest. It doesn't say that he judged for 80 years. And then when, you know, when Jabin comes, it just uh, says when Ehud was dead. So, so this seems to fit the mm -hmm. best, I think, of the different things we looked at. But it doesn't mean it's correct. Mm -hmm. It could be some other solution. Yes. It certainly, uh, the, the consequence does need some solution. There is a problem there. You know, there's too long a period when you add up all the years. They need to be shortened some way. And um, to me, out there would allow that possibility. It's even a greater problem when you take Usher's chronology, he has 40 years less for the period of judges. Mm -hmm. And um, so that creates more problems there as well. Yes, that's true. So you've even uh, a lesser time to fit in all these here judges with ushers. So that would be one justification for 1533 being the period of the uh, Exodus rather than a 1490 date. Uh, usher, he had 1491. So we have also Elmite comments concerning Jabin. And she says, in the northern part of the land of Canaan, so we have there sort of like a connection with what Gertu was saying. He says it's the northern section of Israel. That lay the possessions of Jabin, king of Hazor. In the days of Joshua, this monarch united with other kings against Israel, but was utterly defeated, and the city was burned. So this is in the time of Joshua. And then it says, and after some years, so I'm thinking maybe... could be over 100 years anyway. So how, uh, it says, and after some years, however, the Canaanites recovered from their defeat and rebuilt the city. A new king, Jabin, rose into great power. For 20 years, the Israelites groaned under the yoke of their oppressor. I'll just check what I said there with this diagram. So if we're going to have, there's the crossing of the Jordan. So it's maybe going to be, some years into that cr crossing, say about, uh, say seven years, for instance, uh, from that their time, if that was going to be, that would make that period uh, 33 years, and then you have Cushion Rephaim, eight years, so I'll say about 40 ish, and then you have Othniel, Eglon, so yeah, it would be. Uh, and then you have Ehud, 20 years, so yeah, it would be over 100, 120 odd years later, anyway, to when that city is then rebuilt, and you have then this year other Jabin uh, oppressing Israel for 20 years. And then Ellen White, she also confirms the 40 years that we find in Deborah and Barak. It says 40 years of peace elapsed after the destruction of Sisera and his host. And that sort of backs up there of what it says in the land rested after 40 years that we read in Judges chapter 5, verse 31. So discuss the chronology of uh, taking the land. So we had the Canaanites, they come in, cross the River Jordan, they take Jericho, um, AI and so forth, and talks about them defeating the nations. 
And then sort of towards the end of that fair time in Joshua chapter 14, verses 5 to 10, it states, As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land, and the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kazanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea, forty years old was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy, the la espy out the land, and I brought him word again, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that were not with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereupon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he has said, these forty-five, forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. So the year that Caleb began to spy out the land, <coughs> was about a year and three months after the children of Israel had departed from Egypt. Then they went down to, to Mount Sinai, and then it talks about them having the Passover there, and then Numbers chapter 10 says that they left the, the Mount Sinai in the 20th day of the second month. And then they're going to take at least maybe 11 days or so um, to travel to Kadesh Barnea, and then they're going to send in spies. And then it says, Caleb states that he was 40 years old at that time. Therefore, he would have been at the most 39 years old when the time of the Exodus. So, then verses, he states he's 45 years had passed since he spied out the land. So that would make him, and he states he's 85 years old. Therefore, that would be 46. He would be, 46 years older than he was then during the time of the Exodus. So I have a diagram there. So you have the 40 years in the wilderness and then six years to when Caleb is saying he's 85. And then, so this here period of 46 uh, can be seen to mirror the, the six days, followed by the 40 days that Mer Moses stayed on Mount Sinai before receiving the initial Ten Commandments on the two tables of stone. It says there in Exodus, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the cloud, out of the midst of the cloud. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. So Elmite, she makes a statement that I don't have here, but she says these six days were separate from the 40 days and 40 nights. So there's the 46 days in total that Moses is on Mount Sinai at that their time. And then from then you can count 40 years to when they enter Canaan, followed by six years of the land at rest, until the land is at rest from war, which we're going to sort of see that happens after um, when Caleb is uh, 85 years old. So in the following verses, Caleb says to Joshua, Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou hast heard us in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I will be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, I gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And then after the count is that the land had rest from war. And then in the following chapters, the land's going to be, begins to be divided by lot. So that would be from chapter 15 to 17. So returning to these uh, 
450 years that we had read about um, in Acts chapter 13, verse 20. I'm making some application concerning them. <coughs> it says in Nehemiah chapter 7, sorry, chapter 9, verse 7, it tells us, Thou art the Lord God whom did choose Abram, and brought him out forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gave him the name Abraham. So Acts 13 mentions there from the choosing of the fathers until the dividing of the land by lot is a period of 450 years. And here we have Abraham being chosen. But uh, this year verse is probably, we need to take account that it doesn't just say fathers, it actually mentions from the choosing of the fathers, which is plural, and would denote a time when there would be at least uh, two of the fathers living. So that would be taking us back uh, a bit too far. So the year of the Exodus is the end point. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to sort of contrast these 450 years that we find in this year period with another span that we find uh, called 430 years that we find in Galatians 3, verse 17. It says, Now to Abram and his seed, where the promise is made, he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as one, unto thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before, God, confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So there we have a period of 430 years until the giving of the law, the confirmation of the covenant. So that would be the time of the Exodus. And I'm proposing that that there is occurring in 1533 BC. So 430 years prior uh, was when this here promise is made. And we, f we can read about it when Abraham was 75 years old. And uh, that's brought about in... Uh, brought the count there is, is given in Genesis chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. It says, So Abraham, as the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance. And so they gathered, and, and so the substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came, and Abraham passed through the land into the place of Shechem, and the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was in the land, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham, and said, Unto thy seed I will give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So you have there the giving of the seed, uh, which connects to what we're reading about there in, uh, in Galatians, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, not to seeds as to many, but as to one seed, which is applying to Christ. So 430 years prior to the Exodus in 1533, that uh, brings us to 1963 BC. And there I have a diagram that compares these 430 years to the 450 years. So Abraham leaves Haran, and then you have 430 years to the Exodus. Then you have 40 years to the crossing of the, the Jordan. And then it's going to be six years that we looked at concerning uh, Caleb and his comments uh, to Joshua, saying he's 85 years old at their time, and that would have been in 1487 uh, BC, and if you're going to count back 450 years um, to the choosing of the fathers, it would take you to 1937 BC. And so if Abraham was uh, 75 here, uh, 1937 would be 26 years later. And so Abraham would be 101 years, but it doesn't say exactly 450 years. It says about 450 years. 
Um, so it's just, uh, just another comment, uh, more analysts concerning these here 430 years. It says there that uh, this year period can be divided into a chiasm. You have four generations from Abraham to Joseph uh, to the midpoint of these 430 years. And then you have another, uh, so 215 years then to the, the Exodus in Egypt. You have another four generations. And um, you can identify that God's people sojourned in Canaan largely during the first 215 years. Uh, this would be, ex with the, maybe the exception that one time Abraham went into Egypt uh, for a short time with uh, where he was during a time of famine. He was tested. He wasn't supposed to go to, to Egypt, but God allowed him to go there. But he was, uh, uh, then Sarah, he said he lied to, to Pharaoh saying that uh, he wasn't that Sarah was just his sister, which is sort of like a half-truth. Um, but go, you have the comments? Yeah, just it's interesting about these four generations. So we know that they're going to come out of the land that they go into in four generations. And we see it's going to be uh, the line of the Levites leading up to Aaron. Aaron's going to mark the fourth generation, and it's in his time that they come out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But there's also four generations for that first 215 years. And that's going to be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Joseph's going to be the one that goes down into Egypt. And the question would be, why is there this separation? Like, why didn't it continue with Joseph and follow his line? Because the only of the children of Israel, the only ones they give us the ages of during that period of the four generations is Levi, Kohath, Amram, and Aaron. They don't give us the ages of any of the other, the genealogy of the tribes. So, so there must be some reason. I mean, just kind of posing a question, but it is rather interesting. Do you, and if you have some thoughts on it, that'd be good. Okay. Um, yeah. Obviously, I think maybe something to do with the priesthood. Yeah, separating these two, Canaan mm -hmm. and Egypt, these two different. Yes. So, yeah, so this is a, a well-established chiasm. There's lots of other chronologists have uh, understood this here period of 215 years. Uh, it's a simple calculation. Uh, you can see that Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And then Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. So you just add 25 to the 75, it gives you 100. So you have 25 years there initially. And then Isaac entreated the Lord, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And her days to be delivered were, for, were for, fulfilled before there were twins in her wombs. And the first they called his name Esau, and after that came his brother out, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare him. So therefore, you have, from when Isaac was born, you have 60 years until Jacob was born. And then, concerning that point when Jacob comes into Egypt, says, Jacob said unto Pharaoh, the days of my pilgrimage are 130 years. We read about that, I think it's in Genesis 47, uh, verse 9, I believe. I haven't the reference here for that, but um, there you just add 130 to the 60 and to the 25, and therefore you see there's a 215 year period from the time that Abraham left Haran until the, the children of Israel sojourn in Canaan. And that sort of divides that period from when they generally debate, was they generally uh, dwelt in Canaan prior to moving to Egypt. Uh, there was a time when, uh, for about 20 years, Jacob fled to Haran. 
And then, as I mentioned there, a short time, Abraham uh, went into Egypt before he was, had to leave uh, due to complications with his wife. And so, but generally, I'm saying Canaan and then 215 years there in Egypt. And I sort of noticed that when you add up these here four generations, uh, the years that he lived, so with Abraham, he lived 175 years, Isaac 180, Jacob 147, and Joseph 110. That if you total them up, uh, the years that they lived was 612 years, and their average lifespan is 153 years. So we get that number in John uh, chapter 21 concerning the fish, in John chapter 20, sorry, actually, uh, chapter 20, verse 11, uh, relates to that number. And then we find in Exodus chapter 6, verses 16 to 20, and also Numbers 33, verse 39. We can find out the ages of the, the, the generations then of those who dwelt in Egypt. Uh, it says Levi, when he lived, he was 137 years. And then Kohath, he was 133 years. Amram, 137 years. And Aaron, 123 years. And the total they lived was 530 years. And I have here a diagram in the center. It's called the Visca Piscus. And it's two circles. And you have a circle sort of merging with the other. And so there, that would be like the center spot of that is the center spot of the other one. And it sort of has this here shape. If you turn it on the side, you see it in a lot of bumper stickers or windscreens of people's cars uh, that sort of looks like a fish. And it's actually viscous, pis viscous does mean the bladder of a fish. And Ar I think it's uh, Archimedes as a near approximation to the square root of 150, uh, sorry, as an approximation to obtain the square root, okay, 153, uh, sorry, he has this here calculation, sorry, <laughs> I'm reading it the wrong place. So the mathematical, mathematical ratio of the height of the viscous piscus to the width across its center is the square root of three or 1.7320. So the ratio is uh, 265 to 153 was used by Archimedes as a near approximation to obtain the square root of this. And it's interesting that the, uh, if you divide, oh, sorry, the average then of that, uh, the years of Abraham to Joseph, is 153, but if you add up all the years of Levi and Aaron to Aaron, uh, it comes to a, a total of 530 years, and that would be, if you half that, we have the number of 265. So to me, that just, uh, it's quite interesting. So there's also another period in this year, uh, history, uh, concerning 400 years. Um, Time-wise, we're okay. Just yeah, not yeah. former. So uh, the 400 years of Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and Acts chapter 7, verse 6. Um, now, it says there in Genesis 15, And he said unto Abraham, Know of, of, no of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in the good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And then in Acts chapter 7 verse 6, we have a, another verse which confirms this. It says, and God spake in this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. 
and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. So a lot of people read this here and think well, the Israelites, when they went into Egypt, they were there for a period of uh, 400 years, but we've seen that it's actually a period of 215 years. Now, we've seen there, they come out at the end of these 400 years, that's, that's equating to the Exodus. Um, now, if we count back 400 years, it would take us to the time when Abraham was 105 years old. And this is not specifically mentioned in the, the account of Abraham, but we know that he had Isaac when he was 100. So if we read Genesis 21, um, there we get sort of around that there time period that the, these here 400 years come to an end. It says, And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. And Abraham called the name of his son Isaac. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw that the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking, Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out the bond woman and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be their heir, shall, be, shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of thy bond woman. In all that Sarah hath said unto her, hearken unto her voice, for in thy, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So sometime after Isaac is a hundred, uh, sorry, Isaac is born, Abraham being a hundred, you have this here feast when Isaac is being weaned. And when we had read them verses, it talked about affliction occurring uh, to Abraham's seed and being in bondage. And so this is being marking this here affliction is actually not them going into Egypt and being afflicted there, but this year 400 years begins with Ishmael beginning to mock Ish uh, Isaac. And that's, the, that's marking these here 400 years of affliction beginning. So I have a diagram there um, that includes, sorry, not that one. I was kind of trying to get these things finished before. <laughs> I've lost my place. Oh. Are you looking for the statement in the New Testament talking about the mocking of Isaac? Is that what you're uh -huh. trying to go to? No, I'm just um, I'm, I'm bringing to the, I've got the diagram here. Ah, okay. So the bottom there. So we had the night. I'll just go back. So. Um, Um, so that's the land of um, Exodus, okay. So this is when Abraham's 75, and then it's going to be plus 30 years equals 105. So you have there a period of 430 years, and then we have a period of 400 years it takes us to the Exodus. And this would be when Isaac is 105 years old. Sorry, not Isaac. Uh, Abraham is 105 years old. And um, we can mark the date. That's what I'm looking to do. So the date we just take 1963. Uh, we minus 30. Uh, brings us to... Uh, Uh, 1933 BC. 
it's the beginning of the M400 years of affliction. And I'm just sort of bringing that into sort of like a modern our day um, to the Millerites. So from the restraint of Islam, so Ishmael, he is the father of Islam. And he was mocking Isaac. So that was in 1933 BC. And then these here 400 years of affliction here. Or if it's going to be prophetic in prophetic days, it's going to be 144,000 days. Uh, would take us to when Egypt is judged and we have then the Exodus. Now, if we go to the restraint of Islam mm -hmm. that concluded the prophecy of 391 years and 15 days, it's going to be 1,533 days until the investigative judgment began on October 22, 1844. And that connects with the date of the Exodus in 1533 BC. But it's also from that restraint of Islam, on the 11th of August 1840, we can count a period of 1933 months to the restraint of Islam that occurred after 9 11, 2001. You had George Bush sending the United States armies into Afghanistan and then later. In few years later into Iraq. Uh, you have, that's been marked as a parallel to what occurred in 1840. And then 1933 months connects to the 1933 BC that we find when Isaac was mocked by Ishmael. So just, uh, just interesting numbers there, it seems to connect with that prophecy. So that's uh, any questions, thoughts before finish in prayer? Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, again we give thanks for your help and all that we try to serve you and uh, we ask that your, your spirit can continually refine us and perfect us, or characters, to reflect you. May we be witnesses for you in this here earth. May we exemplify your character to others. And um, give thanks for the chronology that you're showing us as we approach the end of all things. And I pray that we can uh, do diligence in our studies to discover more of these delights uh, the truth that you're sharing with us concerning chronology and that uh, these things can go to your church and others can be transformed and changed uh, into the understanding of the correct uh, knowledge of chronology. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.